Mm -hmm. My name is Rebecca Palmer, and I'll be presenting with Bradley Newman on pitch technology today. Um, you've kind of already been working with pinch technology in all of your classes up until now. Um, it's the name of the application of stuff like we did in distillation column, where the farther you got up on your reflux ratio, the less um, stages you needed in your distillation column, or the more stages you needed, the smaller your reflux ratio was. Those two endpoints are pinch points, like in a heat exchanger, um, the distance between your hot and cold streams affects your heat transfer area. So taking that into pinch technology, there's a it's called a pinch when driving forces behind whatever exchange heat or mass becomes very small. So your equipment has to be very large. If you wanted a really small reflux ratio, you'd need a huge distillation column with infinite stages. Um, in processes where you have lots of exchange devices, a successful system design identifies the pinch point and then designs the entire network around it. There is a, um, you have to use heat integration for this and it minimizes your utilities instead of optimizing them economically. Um, instead of paying attention to one heat stream, to heating one stream and then paying to cool another stream, you do them both at the same time. Um, the heat you take from one to cool it off, you put into another to heat it up. The method for this is minimum utility, minimum number of exchangers. Mummy, I guess. Is that the, how it's pronounced? No, I've never heard it pronounced before. Me neither. There are eight steps. Um, first, you have to determine all the temperature values, heat flows, and then find your minimum approach temperature um, to your equipment. Typically, this is between 5 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius, but any positive temperature is good. Um, then you have to do number three, draw each stream, label it, um, calculate the heat flow at each interval. Number four, um, take the excess ener energy excess or deficit and calculate it for each interval on the temperature interval diagram. And I'm going to show you all of these. Um, the cascade diagram shows you the minimum hot and cold utility requirements. Number six is a um, temperature and enthalpy diagram for the entire process. Number seven is finding the minimum number of heat exchangers that you need above and below the pinch. And then finally, you get to design the whole network of heat exchangers. Um, I'm going to go through one example that should be sufficient. So number one, we're doing the energy balance on all the streams. Um, this one has four. You have temperature in and out of each stream, the mass flow, and CP value. Net heat flow across the system is 70. Um, Next, you have to choose the minimum approach temperature. Um, in this case, I pick it's 10 degrees Celsius. Um, then you determine the minimum hot and cold utility consumptions, the pinch temps, uh, the minimum number of heat exchangers. I already told you all that. I don't know why I didn't take that up. Um, your temperature interval diagram, when you start off, looks like this. It's got your CP on the left um, of the stream and the Q on the right, and you fill it in. Um, you start with A for the highest temperature interval, um, calculate each heat flow, calculate the heat flow for each interval using the Q equals MCP delta T formula that we all know and love so well, um, and take that sum over all streams that exist in that interval. Now there's a difference between an interval and a stream, which is the A, B, C, D, and E versus the 1, 2, 3, 4. There's four streams, there's five intervals. Um, then you can draw the cascade diagram. Once, once you've filled out your temperature interval diagram at each stage, you can draw the cascade diagram for each stage. Um, it represents the cascade of heat flowing down from high to low temperatures. You add utilities where you need them, label your heat flows, and the net utility flow should agree with the net heat flow on the previous table. In number three. The cascade diagram shows you where your pinch temperature is. 
There's a location where the heat flow cascade is not continuous, and that's right in between B and C here. Using these, you can go on to number six and complete your composite temperature and enthalpy diagram. Um, it's filled in now with kilowatts for each interval at the high and low temperature boundaries of that interval. And it looks like this when you're done with it. The cold stream is red, the adjusted cold stream is blue, and the hot stream is black. The cold stream boundary is out, covers each side of the hot stream, and there's always at least a 10 degree minimum approach temperature difference. This is useful, but it, you don't have to do it, because you, you don't have to, but it's useful. Um, you don't need it to solve the problem, is what I mean. Now you can do number seven, finding the minimum number of heat exchangers around the pinch. Um, each arrow represents a heat exchanger. Um, the total number of 